Hi everyone, good to have you back with us again. It's a little bit of a difficult video to make this one because I've got a bit of a confession on it. If you've bought grass-fed beef or lamb from me in the past, then I've told you a bit of a lie and I'm gonna show you why. We've always been quite proud of the fact that with our cattle, we've never fed them anything. Um, they, they've always just had grass. They do have mineral buckets in with them so that they can get uh, vitamins and minerals and trace elements and stuff. There's no feed value to that at all. It's, it's literally just a mineral bucket. So we've always fed everything and we've always sold everything as being grass fed. But grass fed is a bit of a lie because there aren't many fields that only have grass in them. And if there are, then they'll have been sprayed a lot because that's the only way that you can control everything else that naturally grows in a field. So our beef really is pasture fed, not grass fed. And it's a, it's a small difference, but it's important. So this is a field called the track field. Before we came here, this field had been in an arable rotation and it's never been reseeded. We've never, we've never sown grass in here or anything. This has just when we came here it was all sort of stubble that had regrown sort of like weeds and stuff through it and we've grazed it and had cattle on and off it and on and off it and the sheep and this is the result there's a good bit of grass in here there's also buttercups some docks there's a little patch of thistles over on the far side over there there's some clover here some white clover there's some nettles in along the side some hawthorn brambles sort of sycamore field maple type trees in the hedges and beach there's bits of all sorts growing in here really once they go out of the field we come in with the topper then and we go through and just sort of top it back down bring everything back down under control that takes the seed head off a lot of the weeds we've got quite good grass coming through but you can see why it's, it's quite difficult to say that something is is grass fed because when the cattle or the sheep come in here they'll pick along the hedges and we've got cherry trees we've got all sorts of stuff in the hedgerows here they eat the grass in the middle of the field but they also eat the buttercups. They also eat the docks. They, you know, everything that's growing in the field, they've got access to anything and everything. So they, they sort of pick and choose what they want. Different farms and even different fields within farms will have different plants in them. This, is no, this hasn't been seeded like this. The reason we've got quite a lot of grass in here is because we were doing a thing last year called bale grazing. If you follow us on Instagram at all, we did do a video on Instagram. And basically, instead of using the ring feeders, we were using round bales and literally rolling them out. And then what happens, the cattle come along, they eat the hay, some of it gets trampled into the ground and the seeds and stuff from the hay then germinate and that's where your grass comes through from afterwards. When I say we haven't done reseeding, kind of, we have done a bit of reseeding. But as I say, this field's a fairly sort of natural field. So we're, we're gonna do a quick whistle stop tour. So um, we're gonna go over to one of the other fields. So I'll see you over there in a sec. And as if by magic. So this is a field that we have reseeded last year and we did quite a lot of work on this field actually. So you can see in here, there's still the thistles here and there in here, but this is more predominantly grass in here and it's a different type of grass. This has all gone a bit to head now, so I, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we've got some better weather coming next week and we'll be able to get in here, get this all mowed down and we might be able to get some bales off it, hopefully to feed the, the cattle through the winter. There's a lot of thistles in here as well, but it is much more grass-based. There's, there's less variety in the sward, so there's a little bit of clover down there. Um, so it is mostly just grass and we've got some residual thistles that, that have come back from after we've done the work on it. So the cattle that are in here, you could probably argue are a little bit more grass fed than the ones that are on some of the other older pastures. Still a mixture in here. And again, we've got our lovely hedgerows that the cattle will browse along as well. Even in here, which is much more grass based than, than the field we were in previously, you still couldn't say that the cattle and the sheep in here don't eat anything but grass. So what we're going to do next, we're going to go around to one of our permanent pasture fields on the, at the front of the farm. I'll see you around there now. So we're out now, we're on our front field, the park, which is real old pasture out here. And there, there is literally all sorts growing in this. We've got, there's red clover, there's white clover, there's plantain, uh, still got some thistles. We, we do get quite a lot of vetch growing out here as well, which is a, a legume that's sort of, where well, it's related to a pea family. The yellow flowers, I think might be hair bit. Lots of these flowers and plants have got sort of like local names. And, and so they, they vary different places. The same plant 
in different places will have different names. I, I know that one as Hairbit, but that's not obviously its scientific name. And uh, you know, someone else might know it by something completely different. These thistles here are marsh thistles. We've got that there. Looks a little bit like dock. Locally, I think it's called sheep bit. And we've got quite a lot of that in here as well. Some nice big daisies there. That purple flower here, this one, not this one, that's, that's red clover there. This purple one here is called self heal. That used to be used for medication for Crohn's disease, IBS, that kind of thing. So I'd imagine for the cattle, that's quite a nice thing to, uh, to have in the pasture. Some forget-me-nots there. So these little tiny, tiny white flowers here are chickweed. So again, they used to be used for medication at one time. They sort of help people reduce to fever and that kind of thing. Okay, so this one's, this little blue flower here is speedwell. And those feathery leaf plants there are, are yarrow. So the large daisies here are oxeye daisies. Just in this small patch here, we've got all these different plants that all have a slightly different effect on digestive system and, and that kind of thing. For the livestock, it, it's incredibly valuable, this. When people are looking to buy beef and lamb and they want something that's being grown responsibly and, and that's ecologically sound, what they look for is grass-fed beef and grass-fed lamb because that's what everyone calls it. There's no legal definition of grass-fed beef or grass-fed lamb. If an animal at any point in its life has eaten grass, it is a grass-fed animal. So it's grass-fed beef or it's grass-fed lamb. What you need to look out for is pasture-fed, preferably certified pasture-fed. We've been selling grass-fed beef and grass-fed lamb for years and we've been doing what I consider to be grass-fed beef and grass-fed lamb. It's cattle and it's sheep that have always been on grass. They haven't had any concentrate feed. That They just eat what they find in the fields. That to me is grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb. But because there's not a legal definition for it, it's kind of difficult because you can't, you can't really differentiate yourself from someone else who said that their beef or lamb is grass-fed. And as I say, if it's eaten grass at some point in its life, then yeah, technically it is. It's grass-fed beef, it's grass-fed lamb. So we decided to go for certification with the Pasture-Fed Livestock Association. Partly, to be, if I'm honest, it was partly to sort of differentiate ourselves from other people who are selling grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb. But also, it's a really good network of farmers and butchers and suppliers who share the same sort of values that we do, I guess. So it's about, it's about a bit of wildlife conservation, it's about a bit of environmental responsibility, and it's mainly about making sure that beef and lamb are not fed loads of concentrates, they're just on grass. And for me, I think it gives the best lives to the animals while we've got them. And I, th I think it gives the best meat when they go. To me, the flavor in the meat is coming from what the animal has eaten. You get salt marsh lamb, that's got a different flavour to, for example, Welsh mountain lamb, which is, you know, is just grazed, proper Welsh mountain lamb, I mean, that's been just grazing up on the mountains. It's a different meat, it's a different flavour, but it's, it's essentially the same animal, really. So by having this, these sort of diverse swords across the farm, we are doing our bit for the environment, we're doing our bit for wildlife habitat, and we're producing really, really good meat in the process of it. So now that you know what you're looking for, have a look out for pasture-fed beef and pasture-fed lamb. We'll probably still advertise ours as grass-fed beef and lamb because that's what people look for, but we will have a little footnote under it to say it's pasture-fed, it eats what's in the field. So I hope you've enjoyed it and take care. See you soon, bye.